So I would like to provide an update uh, three weeks after we launched the campaign. Uh, I believe it is important to, to address some of the feedback that we have been given. Some people wonder why is it actually necessary to mobilize yet more funds when this area of the Philippines has received as much as one billion US dollars uh, after the typhoon. Um, what strikes me the most coming there is that the billion has really not reached the ones who should have the money to survive. Um, the estimates are that between 10 and 20 percent of the funds have reached the suffering. The most irritating point that you see, the thing that has changed the landscape the most actually after the typhoon, is maybe not the fact that there are millions of trees that are, uh, that are lying around, um, but that there are hundreds of highly exclusive SUVs driving around. And immediately after the typhoon, Toyota for the first time ever sold out. Uh, so their most uh, exclusive SUV, which ironically uh, carries the name of Toyota Fortuner, uh, is now a popular car in the region. So I don't think I need to say anything more. Uh, we all understand uh, how this happened and that is very unfortunate. The way we try to address it or the way we are addressing it is that we gather money from you. We use this money to procure the power tower and we ship the power tower from Sweden straight to the Philippines. So there is no money that can be uh, carved out from the power tower. It's a device and, and uh, therefore it would be more or less impossible to cut off a leg or something like this and keep that for personal profit. So what is gathered here in terms of funds has full impact in the Philippines. Um, another truly um, sorrowing uh, matter is that the disaster relief tents that have been provided with, with a good intent are actually death traps. Every day people die in these tents because of heat. Those affected are the oldest and the youngest. And just a small 60 watt fan would be sufficient to avoid these deaths. But in the complete absence of electrical power, there is no way to operate a fan. So uh, uh, going there, I thought we would provide energy for mobile phones and for refrigerators. Uh, but now I see that actually uh, the fan is, is a yet more critical element, which is very easy to provide. With, with one power tower we could operate a very high number of fans, given, given that the, the power tower uh, delivers 5 kilowatt power peak, uh, and, and that would be sufficient for, for almost 100 fans. Uh, so uh, it, it would be of great help to many people to bring in more power towers to, uh, to this site. Another important point is, does it make sense to bring renewable energy solutions to an area that anyway will get new typhoons? It is so true that there will be new typhoons. This is why the power tower has been designed in a way that demonstrably withstands 60 meters per second. For wind speeds, for wind speeds above that, we can collapse the tower very easily. So this is uh, the typhoon proof mechanism that uh, makes it a very robust, in fact, the most robust solution uh, designed for an area like the Philippines. Since we launched the Power to the Philippines project, we have received an immense amount of traffic uh, on our media, on, on Facebook and on, on the web page, of course. Um, so we very much appreciate the open, active dialogue and, and the very encouraging feedback that we get by so many people. The part that has not yet kicked in very forcefully is the number of donations actually being made. And here's where I really ask all of you to also make a contribution to this, a financial contribution, so that more people can get power, so that we can operate more fans and that we can
provide more light to those who live in darkness. And they are many and they truly suffer. So we need to bring help to the Philippines.